losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all pain my heart and my soul Lord I give you control consume me from Justice and grace become my embrace to love you from the inside out. And we're above all. In bringing you praise everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades, never ending, your glory goes beyond all things. In my heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control, consume me from the inside. justice and grace become my embrace to love you from the inside out everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all fame and the cry of my heart is to bring you from the inside out, Lord, my soul cries
Good morning. This is Memorial Day weekend. It is that time when we remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice to preserve the freedoms of our country. Uh, we will have a prayer acknowledging that today in our service. It's also Trinity Sunday, and that's the Sunday that we remember God has revealed himself as both Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, one God, and how God has also shown us the nature of, his, uh, of himself as both just and, and uh, merciful to us. Let's take a moment to stand and greet those around you as we start today's service. We'll continue with our opening song. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. Held back the waters from my release, oh Yahweh. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah. sign that you are with me. The fire by night is the guiding light to my feet. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. Oh Yahweh, you're the God who fights for me, Lord of to my Egypt and you took me by the hand and you marched me out in freedom into the promised land and now I will not forget you God I'll sing of all you've done death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love cause you're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come before our God and Savior, confessing our sins. Lord of all, we confess that we are poor examples of Christian love and faith to those around us. We, we are, are sorry for, for the, the times, times in our life we, we failed fail to show others our faith and trust, and trust in you. you. 
Gracious God, the example we set for others often shows our shallow self-centeredness rather than sacrificial love. We are, we are sorry for trusting in ourselves and the, and the things of this world rather than living by faith in you. Merciful Savior, despite your command to love others because you first loved us, we often display a lack of love, care, and concern for those around us. We are, we are sorry, sorry that, that instead of love, many people see our judgment, our, our anger, and our, and our ill will toward others. Help, help us to be examples of faith. faith. God has rescued his people from their sins of thoughts, words, and actions. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, he paid the punishment for these and all sins. To all who believe in him, he grants pardon and forgiveness. In Jesus' name and by the power of his resurrection, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Our Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. Um, this reading will also serve as the text for Pastor Dave's sermon this morning. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading today is from the gospel of St. John, the third chapter. Please stand with me for the reading of the gospel. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> We invite the children to come forward for a special message for you. Yeah, I invite the kids to come down with me. And we're going to talk a little bit this morning. Good to have you guys here today. Everybody having a good weekend so far? Yesterday was a really nice day, wasn't it? To do some things outside, maybe. You know, it's a special weekend, too, uh, because of what I put up on the screen here today, and you can see it back there too, but um, what, is, what is that? What did I put on the screen? What is that, Dexon? Yeah, it's Memorial Day, so why did I put that picture up there? What is that? What do you see up there? 
Yeah, they're stones, and they're in a graveyard in a cemetery. And what else do you see by the stones? Flags. flags. And what kind of flags are they? American flags. American flags, right. So Memorial Day, the word memorial means to remember something. And so we want to remember something special about our country this Monday, tomorrow. And that is that there are some people who gave their life serving in our armies and the Navy and Air Force and Coast Guard and Marines, that they gave their life in order to help us have the freedoms that we have in this country. You know, and I don't know if you know this, but, but are you okay, Marshall? All right. But not in every country can people just come to church like we're doing today. You know, in some countries it's actually illegal to go to a church and worship God like we are. And so some people gave their lives and are buried in cemeteries. These, this is like a, a military cemetery that I put on the screen here. Um, they gave their lives so that we could have the freedom to be here and do what we're doing today. So that's pretty important. We want to remember that. It's also, today's a special day too because we call it Trinity Sunday. And it's a day that we remember who God is. And He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now what can you... Can you tell me some things we should remember about God? I mean, what's something we should all remember about God? Yeah, that He saved us. So God came to earth, right? That's Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, who came to earth. He became a human being. And how did He save us? Yeah, He went to the cross, and He gave His life for us, right? And He rose from the dead. So what else do we know about God besides that He's our Savior? Anything else you guys remember about God that we should all remember? He made a new beginning. Well, let's start with the first beginning. So He created this world, right? Yeah. So God the Father is our creator. He made everything we have here. You know, the sun, moon, stars, planets, the, the earth we live in, all of us, He made us too, right? And anything else? Do you, do you think God is with us here today? Yeah, so God can be everywhere. Is He in heaven too, Jackson? Yeah, He is in heaven and He's here all at the same time because He can be everywhere. And is God like strong, stronger than anybody? Yeah, so He is all powerful. And does God know everything about us? Does He know what you're thinking right now? Does He know what these people are thinking out there? Yeah. Yeah, he's all-knowing. He knows everything. So those are, yeah, those are the, some characteristics of who God is as our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons in one God. So today's kind of a day we remember who God is and what he is like. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the sermon today. All right, would you guys fold your hands and repeat after me today? Dear God, thank you for everything you have done for us especially the gift of our salvation. Help us remember that you are Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. All right, guys, you can have a little treat out of the church there. Amelia's going to help you with that, and we'll continue with our message today. So Memorial Day is an important day. And you probably heard that and remembered that yourselves um, because we do need to remember, right? We do need to remember what has been done to preserve our freedoms here in this country. Um, I think Anago, by the way, always does a nice job of, of remembering that. Um, the parade tomorrow and then also a little service at the courthouse, um, speakers, and, and usually there's a prayer there and things. Um, and then local communities do some things too we've got usually there's there's a presentation of flocks and mattoon you know so take any of those things in that you can tomorrow and remember the sacrifice that was made so we can enjoy what we have today here in this church worshiping god freely but also the other freedoms of this country um, we we need not take them for granted right we need to give thanks for those Today, I, I want to focus on that Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 6 and, and really focus on what it means to believe in this God that we believe in. What is the truth about God? You might have 
watch this movie. This is a little bit dated now, but about 30 years ago, um, there was this movie that came out um, called A Few Good Men, starred Tom Cruise as a naval attorney, um, and then there was a death of a soldier at Guantanamo Bay, and then he was trying to get to the truth of what really happened to that soldier. Anybody ever watch that movie? It's a, it's a good one if you haven't, by the way. Um, uh, I, I don't know about for little kids, though. But, but uh, you get to this point in the movie where Colonel Jessup, who's the character played by Jack Nich Nicholson here in the picture, you know, he's put on the stand, and, and Tom Cruise, whatever, whatever his name was as the attorney, um, you know, is just kind of needling him, just trying to get under his skin a little bit, and finally gets to this point where he says the famous line in the movie, you know, you can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth of what really happened. And then he went on, of course, to spill the beans on exactly what happened to that soldier at Guantanamo Bay, that fictional soldier in the movie. You know, so can we handle the truth is really the question today when it comes to the truth about God. Because I think we're tempted, human beings are tempted to kind of see God in our own image. <laughs> to think about God in human terms. To kind of pigeonhole God into just, you know, maybe a small representation of who he really is. So here's some examples. I, I think there's people that think about God in this way. You know, it's kind of the genie that appears and you rub the lamp and you ask him for three wishes and you, you know, you expect him to do whatever you want him to do or what you need. You know, it's kind of a God of desperation that, you know, when I get in real trouble, well, then I'll go to God and he better, he better perform you better do what I expect. Other people view God as kind of this elderly figure that's in the rocking chair. You know, he did all his hard work. God created this earth. You know, that must have been hard. You know, built, built the world that we have and everything in it and all the universe and stars and planets and everything like that. And then he even came to this earth in human form and he went through a, a sacrificial life that ended in death on a cross and then he rose from the dead and he went back to heaven and now he's just watching the world go round but he's not really involved because he already did his thing but that's not correct representation of God either that's not the right God or some people might see God as kind of this figure of this is actually a picture of Zeus you know God's up in heaven and he's just trying to throw lightning bolts down on people he's just waiting for the opportune time when you just you know, slip up just a little bit. He's going to cast that lightning bolt and get you. But that's not really our God either. So today we really want to see who is this God. And we, we find that Isaiah, the prophet in the Old Testament, has a, a kind of a personal meeting with God, a little face-to-face -face with God. And it's a little bit terrifying, to be honest, at the, at the beginning. But he really finds out the true nature of God, and so do we, in Isaiah chapter 6. So I want to read the first three verses again of that, of that Old Testament reading from Isaiah 6. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple, and above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts, the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Wow, let's start with the seraphs. This is the only place in the Bible, by the way, here in Isaiah chapter 6, that the word seraph or seraphim occurs, and it occurs twice in this section. So we don't know a lot about these, these angels that were flying. You know, the word seraph means burning. So maybe they were burning on fire. Maybe they looked like fire. Maybe their wings were on fire. We don't really know. Um, they had wings that covered their eyes. Some people think that's because they couldn't, they weren't even worthy to see God in all his glory. Or maybe they co covered their feet uh, so that they could travel, and, but then they had the wings that flew. They're kind of a mystery creature. But I wouldn't get too caught up on these angels, okay? Angels were there to serve God's purposes, and that's what these angels did. They were flying back and forth, and more important than the way they looked is what did they say? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. 
So if something is repeated in the Bible, usually that means it's repeated for significance, that it's repeated for emphasis. So for instance, in Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah writes, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. So that means, that doesn't mean Isaiah was stuttering. <laughs> it doesn't mean that he forgot what he said so he had to repeat it. Comfort, comfort means give my people extra comfort. They need it in their time of struggle and loss and pain. So comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Well, here in Isaiah 6, it's holy, holy, holy. It's not just twice, it's three times. And the fancy way of saying that is it's a super superlative. I mean, it's like you're heaping this stuff together and you're, you're mounding it up. You're saying that God isn't just holy. And he's not just like really holy. He's really, really, really holy. He is so holy that he is so different than anything else. You can't even really comprehend what God is like. He's so holy. And to be holy means that you're completely different, but you're also perfect and you're righteous. And you're supreme over all. So to be in the presence of this holy, holy, holy Lord, L-O-R-D, by the way, four capital letters, you already know this if you've been around my sermons long enough, but that's the word Yahweh, God's personal name. That is what we would call the Trinity. Okay, so holy, holy, holy is Yahweh of hosts, and hosts means armies, okay? It's not like he's a good host or hostess or something like that, right? He is the Lord of armies. He's the God over his whole angel army. So Isaiah is in the midst of this. He's, he's brought up to kind of be shown this heavenly vision of, of the almighty God, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-encompassing, uh, all in all. That's our God. And if you and I were in the place of Isaiah, we would probably have the similar reaction. Woe is me! <laughs> Isaiah says, woe is me, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I minister and talk to and dwell among people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of glory. I am unworthy of that. So what about this woe is me? It's actually a little bit more severe than what it sounds. When he says, woe is me, I am lost, what he's really saying, what it really says is, I am destroyed. Woe is me, I am destroyed. In fact, you could back up into Isaiah chapter 5, and we did this a little bit in Bible class today, but God's judgment is coming down on Israel and Judah because of their apostasy, because they have left God and they've worshipped other gods and they don't trust in God. Instead, they're trusting in themselves and they're trusting in their wealth. And God said, there's judgment coming. Woe is you. God's judgment is coming. But here Isaiah himself, as the spokesman of God, realizes he, he is even unworthy to be in the presence of this almighty, all-powerful, all-holy God. Woe is me. I am destroyed. There's no way I could even stand here. God certainly is about ready to do away with me. He's got the lightning bolt in his hand. Except that's not what happens. In fact, what happens next is completely baffling. It's completely what we would not expect God to do if he's holy, holy, holy. Instead, we have this strange kind of thing happen where all of a sudden we see an angel, one of those seraphs, flying with a tongue in his hands and he, and he reaches into the... the uh, the fire, actually the altar, where they were burning sacrifices at the temple, so that's the image we have of, of God in heaven. He's in his heavenly throne and in his temple. And, and we've, so we've got the, the sacrificial altar area where the animals are burned to make atonement for the sin of the people, to, to bring forgiveness to people 
Animals were substituted for the people's sins, and that's why they were sacrificed there. Sometimes, you know, you wonder why were all those sacrifices in the Old Testament, is they were taking the place of the people because there had to be bloodshed to bring forgiveness. And so out of the tongs of the fire, the seraph, that strange burning angel creature with the six wings, brought one of the coals to the mouth of Isaiah and put it on his lips. You know, I remember reading that, I think, when I was younger, when I was probably a teenager, and thinking, wow, that must have hurt. I mean, you got coal put on your lips, burning coal on your lips. But of course, this is a vision, right? Didn't hurt Isaiah's lips. And why on his lips? Because he said, I am a man of unclean lips. Did you ever notice how often sin comes out of our mouth? You know, what we say about others? what we say in general, you know, it's a lot easier to say bad things about people than it is to build people up and encourage them. Or as the Eighth Commandment says, you know, put the best construction on everything is the way Martin Luther explained it. Um, we talked about this too a little bit in Bible class. Isn't it interesting that two commandments have to do with our mouth? You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. That's the second commandment. And you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, the eighth commandment. So the mouth seems to be kind of an orifice of sin at times. And by the way, what comes out of our mouth is only a reflection of what goes on here, right? In our heart. So we got this sin problem, and even Isaiah had it. He wasn't perfect, and he was a prophet of God. <laughs> he knew that he needed cleansing of that sin. He knew that he couldn't stand before the holy, holy, holy God. He would be destroyed. But God reaches out and does the most amazing thing and takes the coal from the sacrificial fire, from the sacrifice, the, the altar area, and puts it on his lips as a sign of forgiveness. You are going to be forgiven. You are forgiven. So what about us? How does this apply to us? I mean, this happened 740 B.C. <laughs> that was a long time ago, you know, 2,700 years ago. But, you know, we we're really saved the same way, aren't we? We have a trinity. We have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who came to this earth and made the ultimate sacrifice. Now, Jesus didn't go on an altar and get burned up like that kind of sacrifice, but he did make the sacrifice, didn't he? And his blood was shed for not just our sin, the sin of the whole world. And we hear it, you know, in the gospel reading today in John 3, 16, God so loved the world he gave his one and only son. He sacrificed his son Jesus so that you and I could have forgiveness and mercy so we could know the love of God in that sacrifice so the tongs could come from that sacrifice and touch our lips and maybe the most concrete example of that is right here what's going to go on here at the next part of the service right we're going to receive the body and blood of Jesus sacrificed for us on the cross you know 2,000 years ago but given to us and delivering the grace of God, the forgiveness of our sins, and strengthening our faith. And it gets to go actually through our lips and down into our, into our stomach and, and affect our heart <laughs> and bring cleansing and peace and God's grace. We've been made whole again. That's what that word atonement means when we find out that we have been made one with God who has shown us his mercy. The seraph si said to Isaiah, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. So atoned for means to take two things that were separated and bring them together. So I like to simplify words like atonement just means at one meant. At one, we are now made again at one with God. A relationship restored because the Son of God made the sacrifice for us and our lips are touched. Our heart is touched. We're cleansed by the blood of Jesus and brought into relationship with Him. Now this changed 
by the way, um, Isaiah's attitude completely. Um, all of a sudden now, with the forgiveness of sins, he can stand actually in front of this holy, holy, holy God and not in fear anymore, but in faith and confidence in this God of love, not just a God of, of awe and power, but the God of love. And, and he doesn't have to fear even when he comes to the end of his life as we don't have to fear when we come to the end of our life. When we actually stand before the judgment throne of God, the truth is we need not fear because we have forgiveness of sins. And when Jesus gave us his forgiveness, he gave out complete forgiveness. Okay? He didn't hold back. He just didn't forgive a few sins and leave the bad ones, you know, for later that we'll have to take care of in a different way. No, we're completely forgiven. So when we pass away, when we stand before the judgment throne of God, we can have complete confidence that Jesus is enough. We don't point to ourselves. We don't say it's because we did a number of good things that God's going to accept us now. No, it's Jesus who has loved us with such a great and everlasting love. In fact, it inspired Isaiah so much that when God said, well, who's going to go for us? Who's going to go out now and spread this word to my people about the righteous and holy God, the God of judgment who loves his people so much he would even make the ultimate sacrifice for them? And Isaiah raised his hand and he said, send me, send me. Here am I. So God sent Isaiah out. He had a, a difficult ministry. Let's just put it that way. You can read the book, rest of the book of Isaiah and see what happened. But he was a prophet at a time it was pretty difficult. He had to declare God's truth to the people that sometimes weren't willing to listen. But that's what we do too. We have been given the truth about God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. The God who saves. The God who is all powerful and holy, holy, holy. But also the God who loves and has mercy and reaches out in forgiveness even when we don't deserve it because we don't. And he's given us that truth to share with this world so that others can stand before the throne of God with us on the last day and recognize that they too are saved through the blood of the sacrifice of the Son of God. May God grant this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Together we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Seated, at this time we will receive the offerings. Lord God Almighty, we bring to your altar this, half, this morning our offerings, our tithes, and our gifts, and we pray that you would bless them as they are used by your people to carry the message of your beloved gospel to a hurting world. These things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. We have a couple of additions to the prayers found in your worship folder. Uh, we'll be adding a prayer for a friend of the congregation, uh, Mary Mann. And we'll be adding a prayer for uh, Pastor Don Sprangler, who was seriously injured in a car accident yesterday. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
Lord of hosts, our pastors, teachers, and other church workers have heard your voice calling them to be your servants. Grant them the Holy Spirit so that they can always say, here I am, send me to whatever task you ask. O Lord of hosts, you sit enthroned as king forever. Bless all who govern us in your stead with wisdom and understanding that truth and justice may prevail in our land and lawlessness may be kept at bay. Lord of hosts, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon this nation. Grant us a long memory to recall those who gave the full measure of devotion to our country's peace and security. Bring to mind the sacrifices of those who serve faithfully in our nation's armed forces until death in the protection of our freedom and in the defense of our land. Lord of hosts, uphold, your uphold our members, Nancy Hunter, Stephanie Wolf, Dan and Gloria Cohn, Tom and Angie Beneshek, Teresa Poltrock, David Manny, and Peg Werninger, friends and family, Jan Young, Marilyn Haganess, Jan Meyer, Kathy Thorpe, Denise Meister, Sarah Warren, Craig Cease, Vic Novak, Mary Mann, and Pastor Don Sprengler. Also for those injured in military service and those known to each of us, grant your care, healing, and comfort according to your good and gracious will. Lord of hosts, grant the peace and comfort that only you can give to the family and friends of Jack Greening, Christine Holland, and Raymond Crum in their time of grief as they mourn the loss of their loved ones. Lord of hosts, we thank you for bringing us together as the Congregation of Peace Lutheran Ministries. We name before you today Linda Reynolds, Dorothy Richling, Bob and Julie Rent, Sandy Robrecht, and Dennis and Barb Rochewhite. Bless us in our lives and grow us in our faith. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand with me as we boldly pray the prayer the Lord gave us. Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have the opportunity to receive the gifts of God's grace in, with, and under the bread and wine of this meal, the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
Please stand. 
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the saving faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we give thanks that you made the ultimate sacrifice that we might have life everlasting through faith in you. We give thanks for the forgiveness of sins that you bestow on us so freely. And we give thanks also that you empower us to live out our lives to your glory and take the opportunity, as Isaiah did, to spread that good news and to share the truth about who you are as God to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, this is the end of the school year coming up here in Anago area. So we have eighth grade graduation here at Peace Lutheran this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, and that'll be part of our Thursday night worship service, which is also a reminder that if you're gone in the summertime, on the weekends, we do have Thursday services now instead of Saturday. Those are at 6.30 until through Labor Day weekend. Um, and then also a week from today at the 8 o'clock service, we'll be recognizing our, eight, our high school graduates as part of that service. So if you have any in your family or know of any, um, please pass that word along. Uh, graduates are to bring their robes meet here at about 745, uh, and that is graduation day here in Antigo. Um, their uh, mission Antigo is starting on Saturday. Uh, you can still sign up to help with that. Um, that'll start Saturday morning at 7.30 a.m. at Anago Community Church with an opening uh, devotion and breakfast. And by the way, Jeff is our representative on that planning committee um, for that outreach to our community. So if you have any questions about Mission Anago, please see Jeff after the service today. Um, and there's a, a few other things going on. Check your bulletin. If you have questions, let me know after the service. And now receive the blessing of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. sin was before me, I was swallowed by pride. But out of the darkness you brought me to your light. You showed me new mercy and hope.
say